Welcome to Click to Learn More, the show that sounds like clickbait, but it's actually two dorks. I'm Dorm. I'm Liddy. Hi, Liddy. Hi, Norm. Uh, last time on mm. Click to Learn, well, two times ago on Click to Learn More. <laughs> last my time. previously. Yeah, last on, my on time Dorm's on, on Click to Learn. Click to Learn Dorm. <laughs> Uh, oh, he's taking I've over. I've taken over the show. Taking... I'm sorry, I never told you. Oh, he you. turned heel. I changed the branding. He turned to heel. I did have a heel turn. You know one time John Cena, because John Cena has never you, really oh, been a I, heel. You told me the story and I like he it. He turned his heel in the ring. Literally turned like, his foot. Yeah, like shimmy like, his foot. Everybody wants to see me heel turn. Here's your heel turn. Yeah. Here's your... Meanwhile, he's tugging at the strings on his jorts. Yeah. <laughs> Do jorts have strings? Yeah, you cut them off. Jean shorts? Real jorts. You cut off the... Oh, you cut off... those weren't real jean shorts. They were just... What? what do you mean, real jean shorts? Then you take jean pants and you make them jean shorts. No, I'm saying shorts. these were shorts made with denim, so there was no strings required. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean, real jean shorts? A pair of jeans. Yes, a pair cut of pants. Them off at the, cut at the them knee. off at the knee. Yeah. There are strings. That yeah, hang but down I'm saying that. these were shorts. Hemmed. Made. Well, no. The, the, I mean, yes, there would be hemming involved, but there wouldn't be... They were specifically designed to be shorts from, yes. from their inception. Yes. They did not begin as something else and then right. become something else. Yeah, he didn't cut jeans off. Well, that's where he failed. Yeah, of course. Well, and, yeah, and, and now and where is his he? His career has suffered. And now where is he? He's Nobody knows. The greatest. Can't see him. One of the biggest names. In, okay. Uh, <laughs> Welcome to the show, Yeah, everybody. we're talking about wrestling, so I guess that's all makes sense. Yeah. Liddy, uh, last time we talked about The Undertaker, yes. uh, who is a big evil scary boy. He is a spooky boy, though. And uh, we're back in the house of the dead man. Mm, oh, oh, Now, when I left off last, yes. uh, Taker had torn his pec. Mm. He torn his pectoral muscle. Constantly getting hurt. Yeah. Still uh, just plagued him. He just had he, a lot of injuries. How old was he at this point? Was he in his 30s at this uh, point? It is the year 2000. Let me look up when... I didn't mean to Taker throw a curveball at you. Yeah, I didn't expect you to ask I'm how sorry. old he was. I'm sorry. I just forgot how old he was at this point. Because I remember him being... <laughs> I looked up WrestleMania and not Undertaker. I'm sorry. I remember thinking <laughs> that he was very young for all of the injuries that he had. Yeah, he was also huge. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, he would have been 25 at the time. 25. Okay, so, yeah. I remember... Wait, no, 35. 35, Sorry, okay. he was born in 65. Yeah, I so rem- 35. I just remember thinking that he was young to have had as many issues that he as he had had but yeah he was that's a good point he's a big dude so you're more prone to get hurt yeah you've got a farther way large to fall. people uh well i don't think that's what it is yeah it's gravity it's like your bones and stuff yeah like if your head hits the ground from a higher height it's gonna hurt more well than i guess that's true you know but like andre just died because he was so big he just his heart just popped yeah yeah do you know you could fit a hard-boiled egg through his ring like the ring on his finger what? You could fit a hard-boiled egg. I know he drank, he would like show up at a bar and drink like 20 beers. Oh yeah, he would. He drank like a hundred and something beers in one night. Or yeah, something. and then he'd be like. They were the size of his hand. They were like a yeah, in like those little yeah, minis. Yeah, it's, it's like a, taking a shot. Anyway. Anyways. Uh, let's do, let's do, what, three separate wrestlers? Separate? Yeah, we haven't even okay. talked about The Undertaker. <laughs> uh, but last we left off, it was the it's the year 2000 now. We are in the new millennium. The millennium, yeah. And uh, so he was taking some time off, recovering from his torn pectoral muscle, which is in your booby if you didn't know uh i don't in, know in your specifically yeah, dear listener your, your booby uh in may of 2000 okay the phenom which is sometimes what they call the undertaker phenom. he has a lot of nicknames yeah uh made his triumphant return to the wwe it was then the wwf but from here on out i'm gonna call him wwe just because it's easier okay uh thing is he looked like an entirely different person oh because he was gone were the trench coats and large hats and funeral music and the uh, somber tone. Okay. And in its place were a bandana. Oh, no. Sunglasses. Oh, no. A motorcycle. Oh, no. And an American flag. Oh, no. I know this one. Liddy, we have entered the incredibly polarizing time in the eras of Taker, known as the American Badass Era. It's so sad that I remember this, but I do. I think everyone is scarred by this stuff. Yeah, I remember this being a dark day. Now, the American Badass taker uh didn't come out to the chambery chant music of what of which we're accustomed i remember oh no he came out <laughs> to an american music classic a song so well beloved by the people many mm-hmm. list it right behind bohemian rhapsody as the greatest musical piece of the modern era <laughs> i'm talking of course about the masterpiece of limp biscuits air raid in parentheses rolling it is a wonderful song about continuing to roll and tumble and moving one's hands in and out, breathing up and down, etc. Tell me what 
what you gonna do now, Dorm? I'm gonna keep rolling with the oh, information. I'm sorry if that was. I had to lean away <laughs> because if I laughed that hard directly into the mic, it would have popped your eardrums. Uh, I remember this. It's so sad. I remember this. Yeah. So he. It's important to remember that this is around the time of like uh, Orange County Choppers. You remember that show? Yeah. Uh, which, if you didn't know, birthed that one meme with the two guys yelling at each other. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, many years later, throwing, I don't know why that became a meme now, but throwing chairs at each other. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so like, what did I say? <laughs> <laughs> did I not say throwing chairs? At, what did I say? Oh, I don't know. I think you I just said, said yelling at each other. I, I thought I yeah. I thought I'd messed up and said throwing bikes at each other. My oh. bad. I was like, that's probably not possible. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty big dudes. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, a huge like, and I'm pretty sure. Don't quote me on this, but this is strictly from memory. A lot of this is like me keeping notes and then remembering things. Um, I think that, like, the guys from Orange County Choppers worked on a bike that Taker rode out at one point. Oh, okay. So there was, like, an actual crossover. Now, he uh, literally rode bikes out on... Yes. Sh- like, this is down- not... Okay. Okay, so I- in the... That's actually a good point. In the past, uh, people have ridden cars, like, to the top of the entrance ramp mm-hmm. and then walked down from there. Yeah. No, Taker would ride the bike down the ramp, yeah. around the ring, mm-hmm. like, circle the ring, and then park it. Which is always weird. Yeah. It, like, is just super anticlimactic to, like, <laughs> ride all the way out and then just, okay, I'm going to put my bike in park now. Let me let me get my kickstand real yeah, quick. Yeah, flip real quick. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, and then Safety he would first. enter the ring and, like, he, he just hold one fist up because that was him. Uh, so, yeah, it's a very weird time for Taker. Uh, one of my... I, I think it's, like, a guilty pleasure thing. Mm-hmm. I was also, like, a really big fan of wrestling when this happened, so... I know that it was bad now in hindsight. Yeah. But I loved it then. Well, think of how many things are like that. Because he was so cool. Right. Like, look at, look back on the movies that you watched as a as a kid at the sure. same time, and you were like, this is awesome, and now you're like, I can't believe I like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, Like, it, it, it just comes with time. The right? funny thing to me now, though, is that, like, that was a, a gimmick mm-hmm. aimed at adults, I think. Oh. Like, I, I'm pretty sure that came to be, and uh, research indicates this, too, that that came to be because that was closer to Taker's, like, actual personality. And the Attitude Era was about having more, like, human characters and less, like, Instead cartoony of, characters. Okay, yeah. And so Taker was one of the only holdovers from that cartoony mm-hmm. character. But then again, the Attitude Era also had, like, Kane burning the funeral yeah. home or whatever. Like, yeah. Attitude Era is really weird. Yeah. But they wanted to shift into that sort of, like, these are real badasses. Everybody needed to be a badass now mm-hmm. for some reason. They're very so, manly men. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah, this was a very, very like we protect our masculinity sort of era. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so it's weird that that was like more like his actual persona, but it felt less genuine. Yeah. Like and, well, it's because such a we had come to shift. know. Yeah, and we had come yeah. to know Taker as the dead man for right. so many years at this point. Right. Um, so it, it's just a strange little thing. So did that, did they ease the audience into that? No. Or was it just literally... He debuted as the badass. So he went away. He went away with the torn pack. The Undertaker, everybody knows. And yes. then all of a sudden he's back. He came back as a motorcycle And the announcers were like, wearing. it's the Undertaker. Yeah, with an American So flag. he was still known as the Undertaker yes. during this time. Yeah. Still referred to as Taker. But, Interesting. Um, and also, like, a lot of times wrestling nicknames are made up by the fans. Mm-hmm. So, like, Seth Rollins, who's a current wrestler... Um, like some fans jokingly call him CrossFit Jesus. Yeah, yeah, Because he yeah, looks like Jesus that. kinda and he's like that. really into CrossFit. Yeah. But I want to make it clear, Taker is like probably how they predominantly refer to him. Like rather than The Undertaker. A lot of times now it's The Undertaker because it's more formal. But... Mr. Taker. Yeah, Mr. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Mrs. Taker's baby boy. Uh, which is a McFully Ma- thing. Mama Taker's boy. Yeah. But, like, Taker is a is a thing that they call him a lot. Okay. Um, so, when I say Taker, it's not me shortening it. It's literally just another name So, that's name his name in the biz. By. Yeah, I mean, it's still The Undertaker, but they'll be like, oh, Taker with the boot or whatever. You know? Okay. Well, it's faster to say if, it's, yeah, than the Undertaker, if they're announcing yeah. it, yeah. Um, okay. So, also, Taker would use, and I don't remember the timeline of this, uh, he would also use Kid Rock's American Badass, which is where the name came yeah, from. Yeah, okay. But... The song pales in comparison to the master stroke that is Roland, so that'll we'll of just course, keep that there. Of course. Like the song like Ah yeah, American Badass versus Keep Rolling, Rolling, Rolling. rolling, rolling, rolling. rolling, rolling. Like it's so much better. It's yeah. just so much better. Yeah. And actually Roland has the build of a wrestling song. Yeah. So wrestling songs usually like hit a, a high point. 30 seconds in as opposed mm-hmm. to a minute 30 in. Yeah. And so like... So they can come out to that. Yeah. Like, Roland can just start after you do the keep on rolling, baby. All that stuff. Yeah. It can just do the doom, doom, doom. Move in, now move in. Like it's yeah. immediate. Yeah. It's into the chorus. Yeah. So like 
that actually works really well for a wrestling song. So it should always. That was in a movie too. Was that in? Was it? Yeah, I feel like it was in a. I'm gonna look it up. Okay. Going. Um, now when Taker returned. It was in the midst of a golden era for the McMahon-Helmsley regime. Okay. Our boy Triple H, uh, who we covered on episode, whatever, 31, I think, uh, had married Stephanie, Vince's daughter. We, we discussed yeah. this with Triple H in the episode. Uh, and they had set out to rule the wrestling and actual world together. Uh, so, when Taker came back and laid them all to waste, <laughs> after summoning himself via Orange County Chopper S. Carly, uh, he was, of course, the fan favorite of 2000. So, he came back... Uh, I mentioned this, I think, on the Triple H episode as well. A lot of times when wrestlers come back, mm-hmm. uh, they are baby faces, even if they're heels when they're left, yeah. because the fans are just so happy to see them. Right. Um, and that was the case here. So, like, he came back, people weren't really sure how he affiliated, and then he was back as a, as a baby face. It was the Fast and the Furious. I almost said that. It was the Because this was, like, Fast and the Furious era. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. You know, good for Limp Bizkit. Limp Bizkit, pretty good. Not even, like, I know they're kind of memey now. They had a they had a couple of really good songs. What's can you name three songs that they've done? I yeah. can name two, and that's where it ends. Air Raid Rolling. Yeah. Uh, oh God, I'm terrible. Hold on. I can tell you. I know which one you're thinking. What well, I think it's not Lump. That's the what is the Nookie? Nookie, yeah. Yeah. And then uh, they did uh, behind these hazel eyes. They did a cover of that. Which is is it, is it uh, no, behind, they did behind uh, blue eyes. Or behind, behind blue, blue eyes. Yeah, sorry, yeah. not that was the Kelly Clarkson <laughs> song. And then they did uh, the cover of uh, Faith by George oh, Michael. Oh yeah, That's but awesome. see, do covers count though as uh, their songs? They, they also, also did. Didn't they do um, My Way? My way or the highway. Oh, yeah. Oh, is yeah, because that, that's that the their, WrestleMania 17 it, song. Yeah. Okay, so does that count as their song? Yeah, yeah, that's their own song. Oh, okay. That's not Frank Sinatra's My Way. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. Yeah, My how way. did I think of... Yeah, sorry, thank you so, for... So I can actually... Well, did they have a song called, like, Numb or Lump? What a four song... They had a four-letter song that I'm thinking of. They probably did. They probably had one just called, like, Butts. Yeah, probably. I mean, they did... Because of who they did name that one album whatever it was yeah chocolate chocolate star- covered starfish and a hot dog flavored water chocolate starfish and the hot, yeah, dog, hot flavored dog flavored water yeah let's talk about butthole of course, of course. <laughs> thank you for that uh, oh yeah break stuff oh yeah i, I know forgot about song. break stuff um no no four letter song this is a weird aside this... but i gotta look it up now i'm sorry <laughs> they have hot dog hey they had a song called stink finger <laughs> nice um Hey, welcome to the podcast where we Google song Lint titles. Biscuit songs, yeah. Uh, shotgun? No, I don't know what Counterfeit? I'm Boiler? Faith? Um... They did have a song called Numb. Oh, they did? Okay. Yes. It is definitely, it's not in the list that I was given in Google. Oh, wait. Uh-oh. Never mind. Oh. I thought it was, never, never mind. <laughs> okay. I, it pulled up a video, but it was not the oh, correct video. Oh, okay. Sorry. No, you're fine. <laughs> I don't know what I'm thinking of. I think I was thinking of Nookie, but. I feel like I know one more Limp Biscuit song, and I don't know what it is. It was used in a wrestling thing, I'm sure. Wrestling loved Limp Biscuit, so maybe that's why I like Limp Biscuit. I mean, yeah, I'm, and it makes sense, right? Because they were like a really driving, like hard rock sounding. Yeah. Even if they weren't rock befits wrestling. Even if they really didn't well. look like hard rock, I can't believe they didn't sounded, pick it my way though. My way is the uh, WrestleMania X7 song, which we'll get there in a minute. Uh, <laughs> now, 2000 was arguably the uh, the the best year overall for wrestling ever. Okay. Um, in all of all time yeah so from beginning of the year to the end of the year uh disregarding wrestlemania 16 kind of if you want to if you want to think of wrestling in seasons right it starts and ends at a wrestlemania so Hmm. wrestlemanias are your season finales basically things kind of start anew the next night on raw gotcha so if you want to think of it as the raw and you can even if you want to take one whole year 2000s great but even if you want to take the raw after wrestlemania 16 which was in 2000 to uh, WrestleMania 17, which mm-hmm. was in early 2001, that season of wrestling is the greatest year of wrestling. Okay. From pay-per-view quality was so good, the amount of stars they had. I mean, this was when, like, The Rock, Stone Cold, Taker, Kane, Triple H, Foley, like, a All lot the names of these you guys think of when you think of were still here. Yeah. yeah. Well, Foley was in and out, I guess, but, like, this was just a huge year for wrestling. Mm-hmm. Kurt Angle had started coming up at this point, um, and the, the quality of matches... While there were a lot of weird Attitude Era gimmicky stuff going on, there were a lot of great main events going on as well. Um, so it culminated, like I said, in 2001's uh, WrestleMania X7. X7. Not 17. For some reason, what? Okay. they just called it like X7. 
Interesting. I don't know why, but that's is that, the... Is that the year X-Men came out? X3? <laughs> so they were like, oh, we, maybe. Gotta, we gotta get on this, this gravy train? Uh, So that is... WrestleMania's X7 or 17 is regarded as the greatest WrestleMania of all time. Um, and it's my favorite WrestleMania, but I was also a, like right at the right age. Mm. I was like a kid. You were the age that they were trying to get, um, you think? No, I was or, too young, uh, oh, I think, okay, okay. Um, to be completely honest. You, I think at this point they were still targeting adults more you than were, families. You were just such an established fan already that yeah, it was like, okay. just, as a six-year-old. Um, <laughs> oh, that makes me feel uh, so old. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I was like a huge wrestling fan at the time. Like I still remember... All of this stuff, like going back and watching it, I remember watching it as a kid, um, hmm. which is weird because like we had, just, like we would go watch pay per views at other people's houses. Yeah, that's um, cool. Like I had family members who would buy them, so yeah, we would really go cool. watch them there. So I remember watching them in like their old house. Um, anyway, cool. so Taker upon his return uh, teamed with the Great One, who is the Rock. Uh, he of called course. himself the Great One, of course he did. <laughs> uh, to defend or uh, to defeat the McMahon Helmsleys, then went on to team up with his brother Kane. Mm. Now both baby faces as the brothers of destruction. Oh, and man. when the tag team champion. How? Can, all right, you go call yourself the brothers of destruction and be baby faces. Though? So th- the thing about this era again was like, p- okay, put yourself in the time and place. Right. <laughs> Remember, in the early two thousands, mm-hmm. when like, I was being... forty five. Yes. Did you say twenty five? I was forty five. <laughs> uh, when being like a badass was the was the ultimate thing mm-hmm. right yeah like people were riding those little chain s's <laughs> and people oh had like chains God. on their wallets oh. and people were wearing oh leather God. way too much oh. and like this is the era yeah so being the brothers of destruction wasn't like an evil thing it was, like it was a cool, badass it was like thing. the cool thing yeah okay so I even though they've used that name both as they face ripped and heel. their sleeves off their t-shirts <laughs> and then went right. out and were like out playing ball yeah and were like riding their bikes with no helmet sure stuff like that okay yeah i got it uh so also at some point kane demasks and is just normal person kane. <laughs> okay. that's a whole story we're not gonna get into it wrestling is just a soap opera with big men. Oh, it is. Yeah, absolutely. And sometimes <laughs> and, small men. And, some, and sometimes small men and sometimes Average wonderful men. ladies. Yes. Uh, then The Undertaker would permanently, for now, so I guess not permanently, uh, <laughs> defeat his longtime foe, Triple H, at uh, 2001's WrestleMania X7. Uh, not long after that mania, WWE would finally defeat WCW and end up buying them. Okay, yeah, because we so, talked about this. So this whole time, WCW has been a thing. Uh, they were biggest, I want to say 96 was their biggest year. They okay. defeated, I know that they beat Raw 83 weeks straight in the ratings. Whoa. But WWF eventually won back the audience. Um, that was when like NWO hit and all that kind of stuff. Jeez. Um, so WWE finally vanquishes WCW. They are failing in the ratings. Nobody wants to buy them. T- uh, Turner gets bought out by Time Warner. And they say, we don't want this wrestling program anymore. And they shelf it. So... WWE buys WCW for a ridiculously cheap price. Ooh. Nobody really knows what the... I don't think people know what the price is, but everybody says it was, like, way too cheap. It was on clearance. So, yeah, so they bought all of their talent, Ooh. all of their uh, back catalog of, of So all that just shifted over? Stuff. Yeah, so now WWE make, owns I guess if you didn't go, you didn't have a job. Right. Right? So you kind of had to. Well, on that, mm-hmm. uh, in true wrestling fashion, WWE decided to make it an angle, which is just a storyline. And have WCW, quote, invade, in quote, the WWE. Oh, so Marvel versus Capcom. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> so, tricky thing about WCW, though, is that many of the top guys, like Sting, Goldberg, Kevin Nash, Scott mm-hmm. Hall, Scott Steiner, Hogan, etc., had lucrative contracts that were guaranteed, and they were still guaranteed when Time Warner bought oh. Turner. Meaning, they were being paid big money to just stay at home and do nothing. Oh, shoot. They were still making that money until whenever their ca- contracts ran up. So why would they take a similar amount to come work 300 days a year for the WWE? Right. So what that meant was that a bunch of good but lesser known guys who were willing to work made the jump. So these guys didn't have these big fat guaranteed contracts. They just had a yearly contract. And now that they had been bought out, they were like, okay, yeah, we'll come work for you now. Yeah. And there were some guys who, to their credit, although I don't know if it's to their credit now, it might have been to their detriment, uh, did make the jump in spite of having bigger contracts. People like Booker T., uh, DDP was another big one, um, and, and there were a couple more like that. Trying to go where the money was. 
Oh, well, trying to make a name for themselves, I think, and yeah. trying to say, I want to keep wrestling. And especially breaking out in, into something that's new or feels new. Yeah, of course. Like, like that's a new opportunity for you them. You can put it, you make a new name for yourself, yeah. Right. Uh, like I said, one of the bigger names who did agree to make the jump was Diamond Dallas Page. Yeah. A wily wrestler who, uh, yeah, Liddy's throwing up the diamond cutter. Uh, <laughs> a wily wrestler who worked both heel and face really well. Uh, DDP also started wrestling when he was 33, which is one of the craziest facts of yeah. all of wrestling. Um, yeah, at that point... Undertaker had already broken like 17 bones and, <laughs> yeah, no and ripped 40 muscles. Yeah. So. Uh, now, DDP had made him made a name for himself in WCW, so how would WWE bring in an actual star who had been held captive by the Turner Helm rival company? Why, make him stalk Undertaker's real-life wife, of course. Uh, wh- uh, I'm serious, this was the angle. There were wh- weeks and weeks of this masked man showing up and being generally nefarious, until it was re- revealed that it was indeed DDP, he got in the ring, wh- and tore his mask off and did this weird, like, like jittery jumping thing <laughs> crowd popped huge for it like people lost their shit when they saw ddp because oh my god it's ddp he's here right. uh but it made absolutely zero sense so was his like how did they know he was stalking his actual so like wife? this masked they would i mean it was a storyline thing but like so she was in on it yeah uh but they would like film these like this masked man just like in the bushes or whatever <laughs> and like you just recognize them by his balaclava or whatever and uh so, like, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so, when Taker squashed DDP in a revenge match, because how are you going to let the guy whose wife's getting stalked lose the match? Right. Uh, that was pretty much it. And DDP's career never really recovered. No, that's so sad. Yeah, that, like... He, he, he's going to go down in history as a creep, because he's hiding in some lady's bushes. So, the thing in wrestling is, there are some angles that wrestlers can come back from, mm-hmm. and there's some that you just can't. No, d- Okay, do they have to agree to these storylines? Or do they get, like, handed a storyline and they go, this is your storyline? I think it's somewhere in the middle. Okay. Um, usually it starts out one way and ends up another. So I like, mean, what guy looks and goes, oh, yes, I can't wait to be a creepy peeping Tom in somebody's bushes. Right. This is going to do wonders for my Well, career. I mean, two, if DDP did accept it and yeah. he was emphatic about it, to his credit, this was the same era where Brian Pillman w- was at home mm-hmm. and had a gun and Stone Cold broke into his home, and Stone Cold was the good guy. And <laughs> and Brian Pillman was just trying to defend his house. And he ends up shooting, and the raw cuts, and then the next night everything's fine. But, like, yeah, that's a whole thing. <laughs> what? Pillman's got a gun is a whole thing. <laughs> but, like, Pillman's this got was, a gun. Yeah, this was an era where, like, that was, like, it was, everything was inverted. Right? Like, yeah. Like, you could be the baby face and just talk so much crap and, like, I mean, Stone Cold was destroying property, and he was destroying that, McMahon's car, and all this kind of stuff. That's the early 2000s in a nutshell, right? Yeah. Like, that's... It. Like, we just wanted the invert of whatever was happening. Yeah. It was shock, jock, comedy. It was everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. like, to his credit, if he did accept it willingly, which he probably was told... I mean, he was told, this is what you're going to be doing. Yeah. But I think Without if Without any knowledge of what was going to happen to him. Right. You know? Or they could have pitched it as an idea that slowly turned into something else. That happens a lot in wrestling. Ah. Where it's like, oh, you'll come in, and you'll, like be you know causing chaos for taker's wife Mm -hmm. he's like or for taker at home yeah right and that sounds great oh cool i'm just gonna be in his head i'm gonna be playing mental games and then suddenly it turns into oh you're stalking his wife and that's very different and also how the fans perceive it and how the the fans react to it's probably gonna change he turns from being a wily you know sort of psychopathic sort of like triple h character cerebral mm-hmm. assassin kind of guy yeah to a stalker and right. that is Which very is, yeah it's hard to come back from yeah it is <laughs> uh good thing he started ddp yoga and saved jake the snake's life so what he started what okay did you say ddp yoga yeah so he started ddp yoga which is an actual company of like yoga videos and stuff <laughs> okay. you're laughing but like no no but that's just like that's bizarre it's bizarre, it's bizarre. it is bizarre but he legitimately saved a bunch of wrestlers' life because of how much pain they were in. Oh, well, more power. And I he mean, started teaching yoga, and, and also, they started doing it, and he, like, brought them into his house you know what? And probably to, like, rehabilitate them. normalize awesome. something that most, quote-unquote, manly men... Especially are, from this era. ...are going to... In, yeah, specifically this era, are going to look down on as a more, quote, feminine activity or whatever. Yeah. As opposed to like, hey, this can actually help you and right. change your life. So, so to to normalize something like that was probably you know revolutionary yeah. in that time. So he's been like, fans love DDP. It's just I love a ridiculous DDP. name. Sure, yeah, no, no, I I would have laughed too. I'm not trying to disparage you for laughing, but like, DDP legitimately saved like Jack Jake the Snake's life, Scott Hall's life. Like he's he's a really good dude. I remember DDP. So, I, I remember him. So good for him. I liked him. Yeah. 
so after the alliance, which is what WWE and EC or WCW and ECW was called, they also bought ECW as all thing. Uh, after the alliance was defeated, the Undertaker became a villain again. Oh. By forcing commentator Jim Ross. <laughs> okay. To kiss Vince McMahon's ass. Literally. Yeah. Oh. McMahon had this thing called the Kiss My Ass Club. Oh, boy. And he loved getting his butt out on television. Like his actual butt? Yeah. No, his bare butt. Yeah. Not his bare butt. Yes. On television. Yeah. They let that happen. Yeah. In the early 2000s. Sure. On tele... Like TBS. Yes. Not mm. not like a pay-per-view I think they were thing. on TNN at the time or UPN maybe? Oh, or USA, the USA Network? Well, see, they're maybe? on USA now. Oh, okay. They've been on USA for a while, but okay. I think at this time they were still on UPN maybe? They can, you could get your butt out? Yeah. On those then? I mean, you could get your butt out now. I didn't think you could on basic cable. Well, you could on cable. You couldn't on broadcast, I think. Oh. Because, like, isn't cable the more raunchy one? Like, AMC is cable, right? Oh, is it? I think uh, so. I, I honestly don't know. I think so. Uh, so, okay, first of all, nobody ever wants to see Vince McMahon's butt. No, especially when he's, like, 50 or however Especially old not was. Vince McMahon. I mean, he's just a muscle butt. He's just got, like, oh. two big muscles, but... Oh, <laughs> Gross. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> Two little rocks. Side so by side. <laughs> then he kind of shifted the American badass persona to, to and uh, cut his hair short. Ooh. Uh, and called himself Big Evil. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I could get the that big, one. The Big E. Uh, big E. Oh, Big E's actually a wrestler now. <laughs> what? There's a wrestler named Big E Links, and he's great. So the Big Evil. This is the yeah, first time the he's evil. changed his name drastically. No, his name's still Undertaker, but it's not American it's just, Badass anymore. It's oh, Big Evil. Oh, oh okay, okay. Uh, so it's so it's header subhead. <laughs> so yeah, basically. Undertaker. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way of putting it. <laughs> Undertaker, in parentheses, Big Evil. Yeah. <laughs> okay, gotcha. So I'm in story. I I I kind of established that, and we we've spent a long time goofing, so I don't really need to lengthen this anymore. Uh, but I've kind of established that I'm not really going to talk about like championship reigns or anything because I don't mm. really think. In the grand scheme of things, that's really that important. Yeah. Um, I mean, championships are super important in wrestling, but for this kind of medium, I don't think you need to know when he won the belt or when he didn't win the belt, unless right. it comes in the storyline. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I agree. Undertaker's next storyline began at the Royal Rumble in January 2002. This oh, is wow. one of my favorite storylines from being a kid, and I have no idea why. Well, I okay. do, but it's stupid. <laughs> so, there was a show called Tough Enough okay. that WWE put on. And it was a reality show because this, this was the height. T U F F. No, unfortunately not. Oh. Um, well, because it looks T O U G H E N O U G H. Like uh, it looks like a stack. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> but it was a show. It was a reality show where they took a bunch of just like normal people who wanted to be wrestlers, and they said, "Are you tough enough?" And they, they made them, like, run, like, courses yeah, and stuff? Yeah, yeah, I think I it remember was, this. Yeah, it was, it was just a reality show. Yeah. It was a lot like uh, Real World meets, like, challenges Survivor kind of stuff. I guess whatever. like that, what is that? Real World versus Real Rules? Whatever yeah, it's called now. The yeah, challenge. Yeah, yeah. The challenge. Yeah. That's it. it was a lot like that. Okay. Uh, but then they would have them, like, cut fake promos and, like, talk about their character. It was oh, weird because yeah. it was, like, kind of kayfabe, but kind of not. Like, yeah. it was like they were in and out of character. It was strange. Uh, but one, I think, the, I don't remember if he won it or, like, he was a, a big name from it. I think he won it. Uh, but when the Undertaker was in the Royal Rumble, which is a, you know what the Royal Rumble is? No. Okay. The Royal Rumble <laughs> happens. I was going to try to fake it, but I couldn't. The Royal Rumble happens every year. It is a 30 man battle Royal match over what? the top battle Royal. So uh, this is before battle Royale games were a thing. All at once? N- sort of. Okay. So two men start the match. Okay. They each get in the ring. The object is to throw your opponent over the top rope with both feet touching the floor. That's important because if one foot touches the floor, it doesn't count. Um, so the rule is once someone someone is eliminated by throwing them over the top rope. Okay. No pins, no submissions, anything like that. Then once every quote unquote ninety seconds or whatever, usually it's just whenever it fits the story in the in the ring at the time, a new entrant comes in. That continues until number thirty. Then the last man standing wins the match. That is the Royal Rumble. So what you do is you just get down real low and you just hide in the corner and then everybody throws everybody else out. People have done that before. <laughs> They've never won doing that, but people have done that. That's also, weird. if you get thrown out of the middle or bottom rope, it doesn't rope. It doesn't count. It has to be over the top. Over the top rope. Yes. Over the top. So um, what you do is you take off your fake leg, and then you can't have both. See, now this is actually interesting. There was a wrestler oh, no. <laughs> named Zach Gowan in like 2005 who had one leg. And Brock Lesnar, like, destroyed him to make him look like a really big heel. Now, Zach Gowan was never in a Royal Rumble. Okay. If he had been... Yeah. Could he have lost? Like, what's... Because the rule is both feet. Did he have... 
so he would, did not have a prosthetic. He, he would wrestle with, so he would just, would just wrestle hop with around one. on one leg. So it would just have, oof. I don't know. Would it never came to, up. Would it thankfully. just have to be one leg? No, I think it would. I think that he, would, it would. Be, I legitimately don't think he could lose the Royal Rumble. Yeah. Uh, or I guess it, I guess they would have to modify the rules to see, say like, uh, all of your legs, <laughs> right? Or, or all like, of the legs if you he's possess out for longer than five seconds or whatever. Sure. Like, yeah. Maybe put a time limit on it. But or there something. have been spots where like Kofi Kingston has hopped around on one leg the entire way and then gotten back in the ring. Like that's a whole thing. If oh. you have the dexterity to land on one foot and stay on one foot, you can get back in the match. So if they would throw them off the over the top rope, yes. they land on their backs on the outside, they hit the ground. That counts. Both feet have landed so, at that point. Technically, because the, both their heels hit the ground, so that counts. Yes. Okay. If they if they somehow, like, there have been moments where people have Kofi Kingston again. He has a whole thing where, like, each rumble he somehow gets back in the ring some crazy way. Yeah. Uh, like, he landed on a handstand once and walked around on his hands, and that didn't count because they weren't with both of his feet. That's cool. They like playing around with that. Anyway. That's cool. Uh, so he was in the rumble match. Again, Undertaker, huge star. And uh, a young guy named Maven comes in, throws okay. him out. Crowd is shocked because this is the guy from Tough Enough. He just threw out the freaking Undertaker. Yeah. Uh, then Undertaker gets back in, throws him out. Which isn't really legal, but somehow it's fine. I don't know. Uh, and they have a whole storyline. And uh, Maven actually beat The Undertaker in a match. Maven. So, good for them. Yeah, he was like... He was basically like a mini The Rock. Like, he was a... He was the pebble. Yeah, basically. Um, <laughs> I liked him as a kid, but he's probably not great. Uh, but that's definitely who he was inspired by. Um you know, they try to get a new star over by taking out a, an established veteran. Right, yeah. Cool idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I remember, like, just being absolutely shocked when this kid came in and threw out The Undertaker. Like, what just happened? You How know? could this happen? Yeah. Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, so, for a little while, Taker just feuded for the belt with different people. Um, Flair got in. Rick Flair got into it. He and Taker Woo! feuded for a little while. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, like, there was this whole just thing of... Undertaker with uh, the SmackDown brand. So okay. this was around the time that the brand split happened. So it used to be that Raw was the A show. Okay. SmackDown was the B show. So like the storylines on Raw would continue on SmackDown. But you could watch Raw and probably not watch SmackDown and be okay. And still be caught up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so SmackDown was just like some more stuff to add to the fire. You know, like mm -hmm. a different promo or a different little match or something like that. Yeah. Uh. And then it was at the point that they realized because their roster was at like 200 people, the biggest it had ever been when they bought WCW, they said, we should make two different brands. So oh. now the Raw storyline and roster is completely different from the SmackDown storyline and roster. Mm. And that was the way for a while. And then they f merged again and then they split again. So they're split now. Um, Interesting. So they have enough star power to keep two brands alive. So at this point, there was like this, what they call the SmackDown 6, which was like... Uh, a bunch of guys that just, like, helmed together to be the main event of SmackDown. Okay. And Taker was kind of in and out of that. Mm -hmm. uh, but at this time, it was, like, Taker, Brock Lesnar, Chris Benoit, Eddie Guerrero, like, those kinds of people. Okay. Great wrestlers who were given cool storylines. Um, then Undertaker feuded with the McMahons. Of course. And Kane interfered to cost him the match. So His own brother. Kane turned on him again. Yeah, this happens a lot. <gasps> no! Um, brother, why? So, again, still big evil. Uh, Kane claimed that after Taker disappeared post-match, he was, quote, dead and buried forever. Okay. You know what that means. <laughs> it's an era switch time. <laughs> Is he switching back again? It's the return of the dead man. So now he's back to old Taker. Uh, that's right. Gone again are the weird biker clothes and lengthy rambling promos. Oh, yeah, he cut really weird promos when he was that guy. He was, like, trying to be more, like, Mark Calloway and less like The Undertaker's really oh. weird. Uh, returning is the beautifully grotesque funeral director that we've all come to know and love. After haunting Kane in video segments leading up to their match at WrestleMania 20, Taker triumphantly returned as the spooky boy to mess with <laughs> Kane's head. Uh, he even came back with an older version of himself, including a what? Return Paul Bearer? What? That's right. Our boy Pauly B is back and paler than ever, baby. Pauly B, what are you doing? And then not too shortly thereafter, Undertaker won a match that saved Paul Bearer from being buried in cement, but buried him anyway after the match because wrestling makes no sense sometimes, okay? And I didn't, <laughs> don't blame me. I didn't write it. <laughs> So he saved him and then he buried him himself? Yeah. Okay, but I can kind of see that because it's like, I don't want them to be able to do this to you. I want to do this to you. <laughs> you explained it better than they did but, at yeah, the time. that's what it was. He wanted the power. Anyway, the so Taker beat Kane at Mania, okay. right? At this, whichever Mania it was. Uh, and that sent Undertaker's WrestleMania winning streak to 12-0. and 0. You remember me mentioning this last yeah. time? Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, and now I think we can officially say that the streak 
called The Streak. And that's it. That's all you call it. It's awesome. <laughs> Officially became a big storyline thing. Okay. A young Randy Orton was the first to uh, really call The Streak into question and challenge Taker to a, mania at main, or to a match at Mania to kill him. Well, I kill him, but Randy Orton's thing at the time was that he was be a he would just beat the crap out of old legends, and he called himself the Legend Killer. Oh, so he just wanted to. It was awesome. His whole thing was <laughs> that he you, just got rid of old yeah, legends. That's was, but that's like heartbreaking. Well, it was cool because like these guys had hung around and done the same same Jesus same <laughs> shtick for like twenty years. It was their time. Their time was up. So it was cool to yeah. It was like, but that his was name's, very his name's like Randy accidentally. Orton though. Randall Keith Orton. But that's not like a cool like. No, like, that's cool. Tough guy name like Bret the Hitman Hart or Diamond Dallas Page. I mean or... Bret Hart and Randy Orton. Bret Hart. He's got Hart in his name. That's much cooler <laughs> than Orton. Nah. Orton here's a who. Randy Orton was a, a third generation superstar. His dad and his granddad had both uh, been wrestlers. I have no knowledge of this. I retract my statement. <laughs> so his name actually had like a little bit of prominence. <laughs> he, um, he had a little bit of uh, clout behind him. Yeah, of course. Okay. But then it was cool because his parents like i think at one point he even like beat up his dad what uh, is great wrestling is crazy I, I love i love legend killer orton he's awesome oh my god uh well randall lost and uh oh. taker would improve to 13 and 0 with that next mania unlucky number now this next bit uh we're gonna get a little weird sorry <laughs> no. uh, as if it hadn't been already <laughs> yeah but like actually kind of bad weird Ooh. sorry okay. in advance so next bit, I'm just going to pull from Wikipedia because I've only re- really read about it in the past and don't really remember it happening. I think this was as I was drifting out of wrestling. Okay. Um, and it's a sensitive topic, so it makes sense just bring it in like this. Okay, cool. Okay. <laughs> okay, cool. And one of the most controversial moments... Again, this is straight from Wikipedia. I'm not taking credit for writing this one. Okay. And one of the most controversial moments in WWE, on the episode of SmackDown taped on July 4th, 2005, okay. SmackDown general manager Teddy Long put Muhammad Hassan, whose gimmick was, yep, you guessed it, bad middle eastern guy oh, but he was no. actually italian i think oh, they did uh, that a lot huh? they sure did wrestling Ooh. has that a lot Oof. in a match against the undertaker at the great american bash Oof. and placed uh davari who was his manager okay in a, a match that night against the undertaker who quickly defeated him after the match hassan began to quote pray end quote on the ramp oh. summoning five masked men dressed in black shirts ski masks and camouflage pants Okay. Armed with clubs and piano wire. Okay. The masked men beat and choked the Undertaker, what? and Hassan put the Undertaker in a camel clutch, which was his finisher. Afterward, the masked men lift, uh, lifted Davari above their heads and carried him away. Three days later, the London bombings took place. Oh, no. The footage aired unedited on UPN in the United States and on the score in Canada with an advisory warning shown several times during the broadcast. So I'm pretty sure it aired after the London bombings, even though it was filmed before. Oh, no. Or maybe not. It might, it might have been live. No, it says taped on July 4th, so yeah. The angle elicited national attention in the New York Post, TV Guide, Variety, and other major media outlets. In response to the criticism, UPN decided that it would monitor the storyline closely and did not want Hassan character on the network that week. Ooh. Hassan later delivered a promo to the live crowd July 14th, 2005, airing episode of SmackDown. But when UPN announced that the segment would be edited, WWE decided to host the video of the segment on its official website. So they said, okay, you don't want to show it on TV? We'll put it on the dang side. Ooh. Bad move. Yeah. In the segment, Hassan reiterates that he is an Arab American and that American people automatically and unfairly assume that he's a terrorist, which is a... Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a valid point. Yes. Despite being in character, he referred to the real-world media coverage of the storyline, singling out the New York Post Don Kaplan by name, Ooh. and denouncing his description of the events on SmackDown, such as Kaplan's comment of masked men being Arabs in ski masks, end quote. Oh, God. Because so, it was assumed that they were Arab, although they weren't. Although they were, it's... It, the whole thing was messy. Yeah. On the July 14th, 2005 episode of SmackDown, Hassan's absence was explained by a statement delivered by his lawyer, Thomas Whitney, who said that Hassan refused to appear on the show until the Great American Bash did the way he'd been treated by the media and fans. Which, in in all reality, not a terrible save. So so was that legit? Like, he refused to come back? Or did they no, nix they wrote that, that character? Yeah. Okay. So they just got rid of that character based on backlash. It was revealed in late July, th- July 2005 that UPN had pressured WWE to keep Hassan off their network, effectively removing him from SmackDown. Undertaker defeated Hassan at the Great American Bash to become the number one contender of the World Heavyweight Championship. After the match, the Undertaker delivered a last ride, which is a different finisher he had, through an open stage ramp onto a concrete floor to Hassan. It was reported that Hassan sustained serious injuries and had been and had to be rushed to a nearby medical facility, facility writing Hassan off television. He wasn't actually hurt, but they wrote mm, him off. Gotcha. Uh, several days later, WWE.com hosted a video of a kayfabe announcement from Teddy Long, where he reiterated that the stipulation that Hassan would no longer appear on SmackDown 
Uh, it was revealed that Hassan was going to receive a major push. This was later. Eventually winning the World Heavyweight Championship, but this all scrapped everything. Right. Or, I mean, and they could have also just, like, made that up. Could they have made up that he no, was going to No, I'm saying uh, the push was revealed later by people who were working for WWE oh, at the time. Oh, so like, not, at, not at the, the time. The plan okay, was this, oh, but blah, okay. blah, blah. So th- it wasn't a, like... That wasn't on TV. I oh, okay, it, okay. Or it was born poorly on Gotcha. TV. You know, I was in, uh, when the London bombings happened, they happened a year after I had been in London. Really? I had, I was in Piccadilly Circus and stuff. I was in the area where the bombs went off mm. the year before. That's crazy. Yeah, it was really weird. Uh, yeah, so that happened. I had to mention it. Doesn't mean I have to like it. Moving on. That's fair. Yep, totally fair. 2006 was a pretty boring year for Taker. As he defeated Mark Henry, legitimately the world's strongest man at one point in his career, uh, at Mania in a casket match. I love that they're casket matches, Yeah, they're great. I love that. Rather than go on about Portal... Uh, this is where I reiterate that. Rather than go on about important title reigns and things like that, I figure it's just best we stick to the the fun, silly story bits. Just know Taker wins the world title a lot, and it's not something I feel like was super important in the grand scheme of things. Sorry for repeating myself. In 2007, Taker would win his first Royal Rumble that we mentioned earlier. Yep. With this win, he challenged your boy Batista. Yeah. Who was world heavyweight champion at the time. (laughs) Taker would win at Mania, as were tradition, and hold the big gold belt, which is what they... What people like lovingly refer to the World Heavyweight Championship. It was the WCW belt. Um, until later in the year, where he would barely defeat, where he barely defeated Mark Henry. Like so, he defended his championship, but beat Mark Henry. Has he lost at all at this point? Oh yeah, he's lost a bunch of matches, just not at Mania. Just not Mania. Okay. This okay. the Mark Henry match was not at Mania though. Okay. Uh, after the match, Edge, uh, who is awesome, and you give me a confused look, which means you don't know about Edge. Edge is great. No, isn't Edge one of the people from U two? No, I mean he is yes, but. <laughs> This That's, is not that edge. This is Adam Copeland. That's why I looked at you like that. I was like, he's yeah, in you too. Not that edge. A, I would argue that this edge is more famous than that edge. Overall. That's fair. Uh, but he would cash in his money in the bank briefcase after the match. Okay, I know about the briefcases. Okay. Yeah, so to, okay. to quickly run over it, money in the bank is basically a briefcase that you can carry around that gives you the opportunity for at any time for a title match of your choosing. Yep. So after the match... He was the first person to do this, by the way. Other people had used it for, like, I'm cashing this in to have a match against you in two weeks. Ah. He was the first person to come up after the match, run in the ring, say, I'm cashing it in now, Ooh. start this match. Oh, shoot. So, of course, right. Edge beat him for the title because it was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> of um, so, of course, at WrestleMania 24, Undertaker had to get his revenge and took out Edge, <laughs> who had also never lost a singles match at Mania. So... Oh, so kind of. It was actually titans, like a street versus titans. street yeah, kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but not nearly as long. He had had like a five and O streak or whatever. Then moving ahead a bit again, uh, Taker became embroiled in one of his best rivalries ever with the Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels. Oh. Now this was in two thousand nine. Okay. So Taker would have been forty four. Okay. I'm not sure how old Sean would have been. He's probably around the same age. He said he was born in 64? 65. 65? He would make it yeah, 44, 44 don't I? Yeah. Uh, but I'm not sure how old Taker was. Or uh, Sean was, sorry. Somehow these old guys <laughs> made a Twilight era of this point in their careers. They were both awesome at this time. Yeah. Uh, you see, Sean was kind of known as Mr. WrestleMania. That's a, a thing they referred to him as. He had been the main attraction or stolen the show so many times that he was syn- as synonymous with the with the event as our boy Taker with his undefeated streak. Michaels. Yeah, Sean's great. He was the same era as your boy Brett. Yeah, that's okay. That's why I know him. I'm gonna look up his face. Uh, Sean and Brett hate each other or hated each other for many years. That's right. And we they about eventually that. reconciled. Sean's amazing. Oh. Probably the greatest wrestler of all time. Oh wow, he looks bad now. Yeah, he doesn't look good now. He looks like a penis. <laughs> Have you seen? Are you looking at the bald picture of him? He looks like a penis. He really does. He looks like a little, looks like a little peen. <laughs> I, uh... He was hot back in the day, though. Yeah, he had a mullet. Oh, yeah. He had a... The closest thing that somebody now that looks like him is Adam Cole. Adam Cole kind of looks like him. Bye-bye. Yes, thank I you. was going to say um, Nicolas Cage from Con Air. <laughs> God, that is an unflattering image to put in people's that's heads if they've he, not seen Shawn Michaels. What... Okay, that's a bad picture of Shawn Michaels. That's him old. Hold on, let me find young, oh, sexy what, boy Shawn Michaels. That's what he looks like. That's also like. not me being stupid. That's actually a nickname he had. The evolution of Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels young. <laughs> Shawn, there's so many times that we've we've gotten off he was track a, he here. He's a cutie. He's got a mullet. <laughs> Here's a picture of Adam Cole. Bye-bye. Like that? Yeah, I guess. He wasn't that cute, I guess, but <laughs> that's Shawn. 
little baby it's, Sean. No, listen, he's got his hair up there. Look at this. Look at this hair. Look Sorry, you, this hair. is an audio thing. It's it's prime poof mullet for Sean. <laughs> look at his peace signs on his vest. Oh yeah, he had like hearts and peace signs and stuff. Anyway, I mean, he, had a, he had a heart on his crotch. Yeah, the heartbreak yeah. kid. Yeah. Hbk. All right. Sorry uh, about that, guys. Yep, yeah, sorry. We just derailed about Shawn Michaels. <laughs> Let's listen, it happens. Uh, so. Happens to the best of us. Taker had also never beaten Shawn in a singles match. Okay. Despite them both being around for 20 plus years at some point. Or at this point. But had they wrestled against each other before? Yeah. Okay. But okay. Shawn won every time they'd wrestled. Ah. I guess it hadn't happened that many times. Um, but, okay. So a match had to happen. So Shawn basically said, I have claim to this streak. Yeah. I am Mr. WrestleMania. You have the streak. I, you've never beaten me. Let's do it. Gotcha. Uh, which makes a lot of sense yeah. uh, in a lot of different ways. Yeah. So the feud culminated in a match at WrestleMania 25, which The Undertaker won. Uh, their match was highly acclaimed by critics and audiences alike and is now considered by many to be one of the greatest WrestleMania matches of all time. Ooh. It's a phenomenal match. Um, now, a year later, after such an amazing match, after Sean came so close to tasting the sweet taste of being the first person to beat The Taker at Mania, <laughs> he was obsessed with it. Okay. Like... The whole storyline was that he was obsessed with ending the streak, even though he lost. So it just became, like, part of It him. took over. Okay. He didn't care about the title. He didn't care okay. about anything else. It became part just of his He just cared character. about this damn streak. Gotcha. It was awesome. <laughs> it was so cool to just see somebody so devoted to some singular task that wasn't the belt. Yeah. It was, okay. It was refreshing. So he challenged Taker, and Taker declined. <gasps> Taker said no. Oh, what an insult. Yeah, so he wanted to win the Rumble, the challenge taker. So the idea of the Rumble, the Royal Rumble, is that you get to challenge whichever champion you choose. Usually it's the world champion, like the okay. biggest title, um, by winning the Rumble. I guess you can also challenge just a normal person if you want to. But they can turn it down? No, they can't turn it down. Oh. If you win the Rumble, you get this match. Oh. But you can choose who your match is against. Oh, okay. So his idea was that he would win the Rumble to challenge Taker. And they were both in the Rumble. Oh. And Sean got eliminated, so he didn't win the Rumble. Oh, no. After he lost it, he was irate and visibly the most upset boy. <laughs> the most upset boy. Then he had a genius plan that would finally get Taker to bite. Uh-oh. He put up his career. Oh. <gasps> That's right. Career versus streak, which is how they build it. Shawn Michaels would retire if The Undertaker could beat him at WrestleMania again. He knew he had what it took. He knew he could vanquish the Phenom if he just had one more shot. Uh-oh. He lost. <gasps> no! <laughs> Taker remained undefeated, and Shawn Michaels retired from wrestling. That was it. But, that was his last match up so until was he, like, year. prepared to retire? Is that the... Usually in wrestling, yeah. That's usually the way it goes. Yeah. Like, you... In wrestling... They never have retirement matches with people who aren't believably going to retire. There are sometimes that retirement matches happen, and then the wrestler wins and keeps wrestling for a while. Yeah. Um, like, if they've been around for a while, regardless if they can still wrestle or not, they will sometimes throw retirement matches in there as, like, a way to spice things up. Okay. Like... The one I can remember most recently was actually Dolph Ziggler, who's a younger guy who's still wrestling now. But he had a retirement match against The Miz. Do like, they call it a retirement match yes. when it's happening? Okay, yes. so you know. In yeah, advance. if, some, if okay. you lose, you retire, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, like two years ago, which was weird because like he's a young guy. He was right. only like 35 or something, maybe. maybe. He might be younger than that. I'm not sure. Um, but a young guy for wrestling especially. And he had just been going for so long with the same character that it was believable that he might retire. Oh. And he had started doing, like, stand-up and other, like, comedy stuff. Interesting. So, like, it was believable that he was like, all right, I'm going to hang up my belt. Yeah. But he ended up winning, and he still wrestles today. Huh. Um, so, retirement matches are usually used for storyline. I would say about 50-50, whether the person wins or loses. Mm -hmm. um, Sean was actually part of probably two of the greatest retirement matches when he retired against Taker, as, just, as I just mentioned. And then when he retired Ric Flair... Oh. At a different WrestleMania. So so him retiring from that match, is that considered, in a wrestling fan's eyes, is that like a shameful thing? No, or... that's actually probably the best way to go out. Okay. Rather than just like walking in the ring and saying, that's it, I'm, I'm done. retired. Yeah. Or I have one more match and I'm retired because yeah. you know they're retiring either way. Like in a way, I would rather them use it for a storyline to be something exciting. Yeah. Right? Because like it's kind of bittersweet when he loses because he retired, but also it's like, Oh my god, he's retired. Right. So like it it adds fuel to the fire. Okay. Um and I love that there this wasn't for a belt. This was just yeah. two men yeah. wrestling. Um Taker remained undefeated. Sean, Michael, Sean Michaels retired from wrestling. It was sad and awesome. Oh my god, that storyline <laughs> is just so damn good. <laughs> After the 2011 Royal Rumble, promotional videos began airing showing the Undertaker entering and standing within a western style old house on a rainy desert. Oh no. Each promo ended with the date 22111 being burned in the screen. On the February 21st episode of Raw, The Undertaker returned. 
So this started the era of Taker, like, taking a lot of time off. Because mm-hmm. he's getting older at this point. Yeah. Um, and so he takes a lot of time off and then comes back and does a little bit of a run for WrestleMania. He's looking a little rough at this point. Yeah. Uh, the Undertaker returned. But before he could speak, Triple H also returned. Oh. What he had been off and confronted him. In the lead up to <laughs> WrestleMania 27, Triple H vowed to do what his best friend, Shawn Michaels, could not. Oh, no. In the streak. Oh, no. After a near 30-minute match, which is a long yeah. wrestling match. Normal matches are probably 16 minutes. Um, like a normal a normal great match is probably somewhere between 15 and 20. Okay. Like 30 is a long match. Uh, in a match contested under no-holds-barred rules, uh, which means... Literally means there are no holds barred, but actually means everything's legal. Okay. No, no disqualification. Uh, and after both men kicked out of each other's finishing move, uh, The Undertaker was triumphant when he locked in the Hell's Gate on Triple H, which was a submission. Okay. Uh, which is an actual submission that could really hurt you. Triple H attempted to use a sledgehammer while in the hold, was unable to do so before tapping out. Although victorious, it was the first time The Undertaker legitimately could not walk out of the arena and had to be stretchered to the back by paramedics. Oh, now that's real. That wasn't so he was a storyline thing. He, I think he got concussed early in the match. Uh, Did it fi- hurt again? Yeah, finished the we, match. We but need just like a little, t- a little tick in the in the corner at home. Every time he gets hurt, we need a little ding. Add it to your hurt counter. Hurt counter is very good. <laughs> I remember when that beat uh, Avatar for best picture. That's a hurt locker joke. Anyway, then on to the next year. The Undertaker made the challenge as he wanted to redeem himself against Triple H from the previous year's WrestleMania. Even though he won, this was the first time Taker had challenged somebody else for Mania in a long time. Okay. And So normally he's being challenged, yes, not challenging people. Yes, because he okay. is such a, a coveted thing of like, oh my god, this man has the streak, it, I want to take it. He's just a titan. Yeah, I yeah. want to take that streak. I want to yeah. be the guy who does it. Yeah. Um, Where he had uh, where he had to be stretched out of the arena. He wanted to make up for that. Triple H initially rejected... Uh-oh. But then accepted. Uh, contested inside a Hell in a Cell. <laughs> yeah, heck in a sec. Yes. Uh, and refer- and refereed by Shawn Michaels, <laughs> who is retired from wrestling, but not from refereeing. That's <laughs> so strange when it shows them res- like refereeing. Like, I, love H- guest- I love guest refs. Triple H refereeing and stuff is so random. Uh, the match billed as the end of the... As the end of an era. This was Ooh. 2012, I want to say. Okay. Um, began with both men brawling in and around the ring. Shortly afterwards, uh, this synopsis from Wikipedia, by the way. Shortly afterwards, with steel steps inside the ring, Triple H hit a spine buster on Undertaker, who then managed to lock in the Hell's Gate, which was what beat him last year, which was countered by Triple H, lifting him up and slamming him on the steel steps. Ooh. Match was filled with weapon shots, sledgehammer shot to the skull. What the fuck? Okay, so when you say a sledgehammer sh- hey, what? <laughs> <laughs> when you say a sledgehammer shot in wrestling, yeah. it's not literally whacking someone with a sledgehammer. Okay. Although this one kind of was. <laughs> Usually it's a rubber sledgehammer, by the way. It just looks really metal. Okay. Sorry to ruin can, the illusion. Can you see it like bounce off their heads? <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, it looks good. But okay. a lot of times what Triple H will do, because he loves the sledgehammer, he will, when he hits somomebody with it, he yeah. usually hits them in the gut. With the top of the metal part. Yeah. And he'll cover the the head of the sledgehammer with his hand. So it's basically just like going like this. Just uh, like hitting someone with the back of your hand, but you're selling it as you're hitting it with a sledgehammer. Really? Yeah. Okay. So he'll like cover it and then it still, shove. But it still sells? It still looks good, yeah. Okay. Because we're kind of used to seeing it like that at that point. Yeah. I think now like it's the same thing of when someone puts their hands up to take a chair shot. Like I think more people would, I think most people, 90% of people, yeah. there, there are those lunatics out there. I think every wrestling fan who knows enough about wrestling to know would rather the competitors stay safe yeah. than take an unprotected cha- or chair shot to the head because we know how terrible that can be with concussions right. and all that now. Right. You know, back in the day they didn't know, but now yeah. we know. Um, Especially because a lot of fans are, like, they're aware that it, it takes a lot of, like, physicality to be a wrestler, but yes. also it's a lot of production to yeah. be a wrestler. And being safe is the most important part of all yeah. of it. We want you to be safe. We want you to keep wrestling. Right. So we want you to be safe. Yeah. Don't get your... Like, one of my favorite chants in wrestling is when, like, you see two guys go up for, like, a really dangerous spot. Uh-huh. And the crowd will start chanting, please don't die. Like, Aww. just protect yourself. Please don't die. Aww. We want to see something cool. Don't get us wrong. Yeah, but, but please, please don't, don't die. die. <laughs> it's a great... It's a great chant. Uh, all the while, Undertaker instructed Michaels not to stop the match. So Sean was about to stop the match. And Taker was like, no, don't stop it. So he was about to break kayfabe. No, he wasn't going to break kayfabe, but he okay. was going to, uh, it, Undertaker was being beat up so terribly mm-hmm. that Shawn Michaels' duty as a referee could have been to stop the match. Ah. But Taker said, no, do not stop the match. I want this to continue. Okay. So, he did. Um, 
When being checked on by Michaels, Undertaker locked him in the Hell's Gate, leaving him out cold. So he took out Sean. He took out the referee. Yes. Okay. Uh, replacement referee Charles Robinson, Little Nature they call him, because he looks like a little Rach- a Nature Boy Ric Flair. He looks like a young Nature Boy Ric Flair. There's a storyline <laughs> WCW, so they call him Little Nature. Okay. Uh, ran down the ring after Undertaker hit a choke slam on Triple H, but only could make a two count. And was uh, was then on the receiving end of a choke slam himself. <laughs> so... Taker's just gone, gone insane. He's gone wild. Michaels recovered and hit Undertaker with the Sweet Chin Music, which is his finisher, uh, which is a super kick, followed by a Triple H pedigree, but that wasn't enough for the three count. And that, like, the crowd did not know what to do. Because he had just been hit with Sean's finisher that took out so many people. <laughs> Immediately, like, uh-huh. kicked him as he's reeling for the kick, gets caught in Triple H's finisher. Yeah. And he's still kicked out. It's one of the greatest false finishes in all of wrestling. <laughs> I'm getting excited just talking about it. It's awesome. <laughs> Like it's so good. Like he should have, he should not have kicked out in any in yeah. any regard, but he did. It was yeah. great. Uh, but this was enough for the three count. Both men traded finishing moves for near falls. Uh, but Undertaker delivered his own series of chair shots for another two count. Undertaker won shortly thereafter with a tombstone pile, tombstone pile driver. It's praised as one of the greatest Hell in a Cell matches of all time. While Triple H thought it was one of his favorite matches of his career. That's really cool. Yeah, I like that they can talk about it too. They like, can say like, "Oh yeah, I love that match. That ma- that match was great." Yes. So, now we're on to WrestleMania 29. Gosh, 29. Which would be uh, his 21st match at WrestleMania. Okay. His 21st WrestleMania. Okay. Uh, and he was challenged by CM Punk. Yeah, all right. Now... I know CM Punk. CM Punk is amazing. Yeah. Uh, too bad he is never going to come back to WWE again. Because they burned a lot of bridges. Both, of, the, both of them did. Uh, to be fair. Uh, CM Punk was treated pretty, treated, treated pretty poorly. Uh, but he has since... Badmouth the company a lot. Ooh. Although I'm sure the company would take him back in a heartbeat because people have done worse and come back. Yeah. Um, you kind of just accept it and, and make money when you both can, but now he's doing MMA stuff. Oh. Anyway, Punk came back, or, or Punk challenged Taker, and he brought Paul Heyman, uh, CM Punk manager Paul Heyman, who is a, is a manager. Okay. Uh, he dressed as and used the mannerisms of Paul Bearer. Okay, I was wondering if there was going to be a connection there. Now, the bad thing is, Uh-oh. Paul Bearer just died. Before this? Yes, like, legitimately, Paul Bearer actually died. Oh, no. Uh, but were they trying to pass him off as a new Paul Bearer? Or no, it, they were just like, Was it kind of? oh, my undertaker! Like, making fun of him. Oh, no, they were, like, mocking it? Yeah, and I'm that- sure, the thing with wrestling is, and After I think most wrestlers are, would be cool with being used as a storyline post like posthumously. It's just part of the business. All right, but it would how much cooler would it have been if they were like I'm back from the grave? Well, nobody would believe that. Yes, they would. It's wrestling. <laughs> I know. It's the whole pre- uh, <laughs> preposterousness of it is, is what's funny. Uh, if that's the was that's the line that you draw? Undertaker has literally come back from the dead like five times <laughs> yeah, in kayfabe. If, that's the, if you go, that's too much. I mean, <laughs> if, if that's the point. Oh yeah, Vince McMahon was in a car that exploded and came back two weeks later. <laughs> like they showed a they showed footage of what? him. They showed footage. This is a long one. They showed footage of him getting in a limo. <laughs> closes the limo door. I can't stand him. Closes the limo door and the limo explodes. <laughs> now he's totally fine. You're going to stop laughing, and I'm sorry. Uh-oh. But the reason they brought him back was because Chris Benoit killed his family. Yeah, And so they hey. couldn't have a storyline with someone else dying because Chris Benoit had just died yeah. from murder-suicide. That's totally So he came fair. back. But it was so realistic looking, and so... Before all the Benoit stuff. Yeah. So before yeah. all that. Yeah. Back to the silliness. When McMahon did it, this is legitimately true. Okay. Donald Trump called WWE to check on Vince McMahon because he, he thought he died. He thought it was real. He thought it was real. That is our president. <laughs> and he thought he, Vince McMahon actually blew up on television he, he in a saw, limo. He saw a thing on TV and he thought it was real, so he called. I mean, are you surprised? No, I'm not at all surprised. I bet he also calls Cartoon Network when a cartoon character dies <laughs> and asks if they're okay. Donald Trump was in a, mess, a WrestleMania match. Oh, I remember. I remember him being some part of it yeah. in some he way. He was ringside a lot because a lot of them were for There's like, not Trump enough eye bleach in the world to get rid of that man. Anyway, uh, <sighs> so he basically, CM Punk basically pretended to be Undertaker. Uh, Punk and Taker had a really good match at the next Mania. Okay. But Undertaker won. Should have been the main event. Wasn't. Part of Punk leaving was that he never got to main event while being the biggest guy in the company. Ooh. Because like Cena and Jericho were somebody main event of that. Oh yeah, Mania. Jericho. All right. I'm I love Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho. Yeah. But Punk was awesome. We might do a whole episode on Punk because he's interesting. But anyway. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 
On October 23rd, 2010, after losing his UFC heavyweight championship to Cain Velasquez at UFC 121, Brock Lesnar was confronted by The Undertaker Uh-oh. at a UFC event. What? It's wild. I Especially now, because they like don't really work too well together, but at the time they were kind of working well together. Was it recorded for the WWE? Sort of. Okay. Brock Lesnar was confronted by The Undertaker, who asked, you want to do it? Just that. And it's weird because it's almost out of character because Taker is just like in normal street clothes. Yeah. And and he wanted to bang Brock Lesnar. Yeah. The incident led to speculation <laughs> about a WrestleMania match between the two. It was described by Fox Sports as the genesis of their feud. Of course, Fox Sports said that they own UFC rights. Right. On the course. February 24, 24, 2014 episode of Raw, Undertaker appeared for the first time since The Shield performed a powerbomb on him through a broadcast table 10 months earlier to challenge Lesnar at WrestleMania 30. Scheduled for April 6th in the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. Mercedes-Benz Superdome in New Orleans. Undertaker went into the match as the massive odds-on favorite, but after one Kimura lock and three F5s, Lesnar pinned The Undertaker in 25 minutes and 12 seconds to end the WrestleMania streak. No! Silencing and shocking the entire crowd in the process. No! Undertaker was legitimately hospitalized after with... Or this is where he got the concussion. Okay. Afterwards with a severe concussion suffered early in the match. Lesnar's music was not played for a few minutes while WWE cameraman continued to highlight the reaction of a stunned crowd while his manager Paul Heyman thereafter began using the victory to further promote the client and refer to himself as the one behind the one in 21 and 1. <laughs> okay, um, is The Undertaker still alive? Yes. How? How's he still alive? He's 53. He's been through. He's so young. He's been through. He's had 17 broken bones. <laughs> he's had f- he's had 47 pulled muscles. He's had 15 conf- like freaking concussions at yeah. least. He's fallen from the ceiling 12 times that I can count personally. Yes. And he's still just walking and talking and moving and grooving and shaking. How's, <laughs> this, po- how's this possible? Uh, how is it? He's, how- only f- he's only 53. How's this man still alive? Like he's not that old. Not at all. I'm not talking about age. I'm talking about what he's been through. Yeah, no, that's fair. <laughs> in, um, in his life. So, uh, result was described by Sports Illustrated as being the most shocking result since the Montreal Screwjob, which is something we're not going to get into. Okay. <laughs> uh, a great number of fans objected the outcome. And uh, basically, a lot of people did not like that he that Lesnar won. Yeah, the reason I'd say, why I'd say so. Not only because Taker's streak was like a coveted thing. Yeah, in wrestling, any sort of streak, mm-hmm. any sort of winning person, any person who's really big, is designed. The entire design of it is to quote unquote put somebody over at the end. Yeah, right. So like. We all knew this undefeated streak was never going to last it because gonna, they got to cash in on it at some point. They have to break it sometime. Right. And yeah. they got to let somebody else, somebody younger, yeah. go over. Yeah. And now they've inherited some of the the exposure from this thing. So how was that taken by the fans after, after all this happened? Fans generally didn't like it. I think now okay. that we've kind of been removed from it, it's kind of dulled down a little bit. Yeah. But the thing was, Lesnar was already a huge star. He didn't oh, need so he it. he didn't need that. He didn't yeah. need the win. He didn't need that. It. was the shocking thing. Like, CM Punk would have been way better, a, a oh, way better pick. Because okay. even though he was a big star in WWE and to, like, smarky wrestling fans like us, he wasn't the crossover star that Lesnar was. Like, a lot of people know Brock Lesnar and they don't even watch wrestling. They just know the name. They know him because of UFC or they know him because right. of something else. Right. Um, so, like, he did not need it. He didn't need it at all. Yeah. Um, so, people wanted somebody both younger than Lesnar and who needed it more than Lesnar, Fair. while still sellable as beating Taker. Right. But they don't want, like, some, you know, 18-year-old beating Taker, because then it ruins the whole thing. Right. Uh, but, you know, CM Punk was the perfect pick, in my opinion, um, especially at the time. But they just did him dirty. But, you know, Punk lost, and so it was like, well, who's going to beat him? And then Taker, or Taker lost the next year to Lesnar. And it was just like, eh. And it wasn't that great of a match. He had a much better match with Punk. Yeah. Uh, since then, he's had several matches. He's... Quote unquote retired, but he's had matches since okay, then. I was going to ask if he still wrestles. So he was retired at last year's Mania by Roman Reigns. But didn't he like pop up? So he, so he left his gear in the ring, which is an old school wrestling thing of like, if you leave your gloves in the ring, you're done. Okay. But then in Saudi Arabia, when they paid a bunch of money, he wrestled. Ooh. And so he's still wrestling and he's probably going to be back for Mania. So he's not actually retired. He's still it was wrestling. A whole... He's a Five years old and he's still wrestling. Fifty three. Fifty three yeah. years old and he's still wrestling. Yeah, I mean, luckily for him, and granted, he has started to lose his he's step. He's gonna snap for sure. his body in half. Like it's crazy how long it took him to lose his step. Yeah, but he has now lost his step. I think. Um, that being said, 
he can still put on decent matches just from appeal alone. Well, I mean, I was going to say, like, the name alone. Yeah. Like, just, just showing up somewhere and sure. having the name of The Undertaker being there. It's, like, there's there's enough, like, of his reputation behind that to carry it. Yeah. Like... And he benefits from being a big dude. Oh, and yeah, yeah, big yeah. dudes both, A, don't have to bump as much. B, you don't have to do as crazy stuff. Yeah. It's a lot of striking. Yeah. It's a lot of really easy on you. Not saying that it's not painful, but right. in the realms of wrestling, a lot of stuff that can be easier on you than, you know, taking flippy bumps or, yeah. you know, diving off of cages or, you know, t- doing a lot of high flying moves or stuff. Yeah. Like, those aren't going to break your knees or anything like right. something else will. Right. Um, but the streak is dead and so ends our, our episode on Taker. Oh. Even though there are more matches at Mania, uh, he's only lost one other one, I think, against Roman. Um, Bray Wyatt would have also been the perfect pick who was the next year. He was like another voodoo guy, so it made sense that he would have. Uh. Anyway. Um, <laughs> so he had more matches after ta- after uh, after oh, the Lesnar match, but I felt like that was the right place to end it. So. Yeah, I think that's totally fair. So there's there's the reason it was two parts because that episode was over an hour and uh, dang we went over forty something last time I can't even see how long it is yeah I can't either but, but like I freaking like I like the Undertaker like as as a character oh yeah he's great and as a wrestler I remember him from my childhood I remember mm-hmm. him as being like a very scary person like yeah. both in his reputation and in his like visual presentation sure like, he he's always been kind of a spooky boy. Yes, he's, he's a very, he's very much he's, a, spooky he's boy. a very spooky boy. Yeah, that was that was really fun. I really learned. I, Good, I'm glad. I learned stuff I didn't already know. So next time I'll do something not wrestling. I promise. <laughs> I've done three wrestling episodes in a row. I need to uh, <laughs> calm down on the wrestling stuff. I like it. Right. I like it. Dorm, where can people find you? Twitch.tv slash Dormstreams. Where can people find you? Twitch.tv slash Team Liddy. We also have Twitter. And uh, I, I'm so Instagram, I, Discord, I'm, merch. No. Uh, every time. The podcast, YouTube, Patreon, Snapchat, MySpace, Tumblr. Nope. Well, we have uh, one of those. I see Q, AOL, Instant Messenger, I made Instant this last Messenger. Time. I'm going to make it every time until I win. Ventrilo. Uh, Ventrilo. Until you team, win? Team speech. This is a competition. I didn't, no one told me this was a competition. <laughs> um, How am I doing? <laughs> Nobody knows. No. Uh, Nobody knows. <laughs> yeah, basically. Uh, <laughs> Liddy, we had a rambling outro last week. You want to? I was gonna say we want to wrap this one <laughs> until up. next time. Keep rolling, rolling, rolling. <laughs> what? <laughs> Careful. <laughs> click. <laughs> until next time. Be careful where you click. Uh uh. Back uh, up, back uh, up. Uh, Tell me what uh, you wanna do uh, now. Keep, keep rolling, 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 rolling. Roll, roll. uh, keep clicking, clicking, clicking. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> By uh, click biscuit. Oh, click biscuit, come on. Da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs>